This morning is is from Nehemiah, uh, chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. After the wall had been rebuilt, and I had set the doors in place, the gatekeepers, the musicians, and the Levites were appointed. I put in charge of Jerusalem my brother Hananiah, along with, let me back up, Hanani, along with Hananiah, the commander of the citadel, because he was a man of integrity and feared God more than most people do. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, this summer we're doing a a series that we're calling Sidekicks. And uh, we're talking about uh, people that are are kind of the the sidekicks of some of the superheroes that are are in Scripture. And uh, this morning, uh, I'm going to be talking about a a couple sidekicks that worked with with Nehemiah. And and their names are Hananiah and Hananiah. Now, uh, let me begin with just a a little bit of background for... um, for the, the context of this morning's scripture. And that is in uh, 597 B.C. So 597 B.C., the, the Babylonians first attacked Jerusalem. And uh, at that point, they, as they, they attacked Jerusalem, they, they began to, to pillage the, the city. And, and it wasn't just a, a singular attack. <clears throat> it seems that um, it was over the course of, of several years, actually up until till 581 B.C., so about 16 years when uh, Jerusalem is, is under periodic attack from, from, from the Babylonians. Now, in that time, the, the city's pillaged not only of property, but, <clears throat> but also of people. Some of the brightest and best were taken as captives from Jerusalem back to, to Babylon where they, they were, were slaves, where, where they were servants. Now, those who were taken into Babylon, they had a number of, of different, different roles. Some of them had esteemed roles. Others were, were servants of, of hard labor. But it didn't matter whether they were in a more favorable condition or, or whether they, they were working in, in de- deplorable conditions. Those who were taken into to exile, those who were taken into Babylon, were forced to be in a place that they didn't want to be. You know, scholars believe that there were as many as 4,600 prominent persons that, that were deported from, uh, from Judah and taken to, to other countries where they, where they lived in, in bondage. So the, the people that were left behind, that, that were left in Jerusalem, they were often old, the infirm, infirm those who were considered of, of little value to their captor nations. Now, the city of Jerusalem has been looted of people and, and possessions. Uh, the walls of the city have been broken down, and, and the, the gates of the, the city have been destroyed. And in that day, a, a city's security, strength, came by having a, a secure wall around the city and, and city gates that should, could be closed. So the fact that the, the walls of the city had been breached and, and the gates of the city had, had been taken down, you know, Jerusalem was, was, was a vulnerable place to any enemy that wanted to come and take advantage of them. Now, in 538 B.C., so that's about 60 years after the the, the initial attack by the the Babylonians uh, upon Jerusalem, uh, there was a group that returned to Jerusalem under the uh, the direction of of Nehemiah. And that's where the, the book of Nehemiah, the the, the name comes as Nehemiah led them back to, to rebuild the walls and, and re-secure the city. And, the, and in this morning's scripture reading, there, there are two men that are listed by name, Hanani and Hananiah. Now, we don't know how old these men were at, at this point in, in Nehemiah chapter 7. We don't know whether they had even been born at the time that uh, the Babylonians originally came to to Jerusalem. You know, it's possible that they were born after the many had been taken into captivity. Uh, But what we do know is they remained in in Jerusalem for for whatever reason. And uh, as they, they remained... 
you know, they experienced poverty. You know, it, it, was a, it was a difficult time. They experienced hardship. They, they lived in a place where they were vulnerable and, and unprotected. They probably experienced scarcity. You know, their, their life was not easy, what they had to, to endure there in, in Jerusalem. And, and it would have been easy for them to only think of them, themselves. And, and who could blame them at that point? You know, life was just, was just surviving. It, it was just getting by. They, they were just trying to, to survive, and, and um, there, there were people taking advantage of them. So, so why should they treat those, those people taking advantage of them w with any sort of respect? There were circumstances that could justify the, the, the behavior on, on their part, no matter what they, they chose to, to do. But listen to how these two men are, are described. They're described as men of integrity and as men who fear God more than most. Men of integrity are, are, are honest. They're, they're trustworthy. They're, uh, they're upright. They keep their word. They, they do what is right, even when it's not convenient. It's been said that one's greatest ability is dependability. You know, and, and these two, two men have proven themselves to be dependable, and, and that's, why, um, that's why Nehemiah reached out to them to, to be leaders as they were bringing Jerusalem back together. But more than just being dependable, more than just being men, men of integrity, it says that they feared God more than most. Now, fearing God doesn't mean to be afraid of God. It, you know, it, it's not, you know, a, a position of, of being scared. But the fear of the Lord is that of, of respecting God, desiring to, to please God, beginning, desiring to honor God with, with their, their lives. It's a, it's a healthy um, reverence and, and respect. A fear of God motivates a person to act in a way that honors him and, and also reflects God's character in their own life. Not because they're, they're threatened, but because they want to be who it is that God's created them to be. They, they want to make themselves available to, to accomplish God's purposes. As we see the, the names of Hanani and Hananiah, they were men who proved themselves to be trustworthy, and they were known for their faithful service to God. Because of their reputation, because of their character, they were called on when, when needed to, to take these positions of, of leadership in Jerusalem. It was because of their, their character uh, that they were, were given important responsibilities and also opportunities. You've probably heard our, the 16th president of the United States referred to as Honest Abe. And you've probably heard the story of, of when he was, was a clerk in a, a store. He, he shortchanged someone by just a, a few pennies, and, and, and he walked seven miles to, to that person's house to, to give them the few pennies that, that they had been shortchanged. But that wasn't, um, that was, was maybe characteristic of, of Abraham Lincoln, but that's not why he was given the, the name Honest Abe. Uh, he wasn't even given the, the name Honest Abe as, as some sort of campaign slogan to, to try and get him elected, but, but rather he was given the, uh, the name Honest Abe because he was a lawyer that was known for his scrupulous honesty. You know, his commitment to honesty was, was found in his deep roots of faith. You've heard of, of Mother Teresa, uh, who, who met, the pre met with presidents, met world leaders in 1979. She was given a, a Nobel Peace Prize, and she was, uh, was given world recognition. And yet... You know, she chose to return to the, to the streets of Calcutta, to the slums of Calcutta, to, to care for, for the least of these because that was what God had called her to do. 
Uh, that, was, that was her calling, and, and that was how she could live her life with, with integrity and, and character and in the fear of the Lord because that was where God wanted her to be. Now, you may not have heard of Jeff, but he turned down a promotion in order to work with inner city youth who needed to, uh, to have someone to, to breathe hope and unconditional love into their lives. That's how he felt that, that he was to, to live out his calling and who it is that God had, had created him to be. Even though the, uh, the advancement was, was enticing, he knew what it was that, that God wanted him to be and, and who it was that God, he wanted, that God wanted him to be. You may have heard of Nancy, or you may not have heard of Nancy, but she was one who was willing to say hard things. She was willing to, to say unpopular things on behalf of those whose voices were unnoticed and unheard. She did so not because she enjoyed confrontation, but she did so because that's how God was calling her to, to live out her faith. You know, her, her calling was to be the voice for those who were unheard and, and to help those who are unseen to be seen. Hananiah, Hananiah, Abraham Lincoln, Mother Teresa, Jeff, and, and Nancy were men and women of integrity who were motivated to, to live and act the way they did or do in order to, to be who it is that God has called them to be. Can your name be added to that list of people? Do you have a reputation for being a person of integrity? Do you have a reputation for being a person of honesty? Do you have a reputation for having a character that demonstrates that you love God and seek to reflect Jesus in your life. A good reputation is not built overnight. A good reputation is not something that we do one thing and, and all of a sudden we get, get uh, immediate gratification or, or some, some, sort of, some sort of recognition. But the type of reputation that Hananiah and Hananiah had came from consistent day in and day out godly living. You know, it was day in and, and day out that they had God-honoring behavior. They built the reputation that they had one decision at a time, one day at a time. You know, it, it doesn't matter your circumstances in life. You know, it, it doesn't matter where you find yourself. It doesn't matter what your, your past has, has been. But each and every day, you have an opportunity to demonstrate faithfulness to God. Every day, you have an opportunity to treat others with, with honesty and, and respect. Every day, you have an opportunity to build a reputation that is Christ-honoring. Two people can make the same decision, but, but it's possible that they they make the decision for, for different reasons or for different motivations. A, a person who demonstrates faithfulness to, to, to God and, and treats others with integrity will experience the, the favor of God and, and the favor of others, although it may not always be something that, that you experience immediately. You know, sometimes it means that you'll face tough times. Sometimes it means that you'll, you'll be misunderstood. It doesn't always mean that it's going to be easy to, to do the right thing, but if you daily invest in building, the char building character in others and, and demonstrating characters and, and integrity in, in your own life, that will begin to, to define your reputation. It will begin to, to define your own character. God will give you opportunities to make a difference for, your king, for his kingdom here on earth, just like he gave to Hananiah and Hananiah. 
So here's my challenge to you the, this morning. When you're tempted to cut corners, oh, when, when you're tempted to, that, um, to cut corners because no one will, will find out, or, or when you find yourself in a less desirable situation in, in this coming week, don't try and make excuses for, for your behavior or your response, but rather you'll respond in a way that shows integrity, that, that shows honesty, that, that, that shows that, that you are reflecting the character of Christ. Let those decisions, the way you respond to others, de define who you are and how others experience you. When you're faced with less than a desirable situation, may you honor God by reflecting the, the character of Christ in the way that you respond to others.